what's up everyone my name is Jeff and today we're going to dive into the new spoilers for Dungeons and Dragons Adventure in the Forgotten Realms and there are some really exciting stuff that's coming out right away. Uh, there's only four days in the spoiler season. Normally, there's like two weeks worth of stuff. And so there is a ton of stuff that's going to be coming out the next little bit here. So I'm going to dive right into what we have so far. There's going to be stuff coming out while I'm making this video. And so I'll probably throw in some extra good stuff that comes out right at the end. I'll try to throw in a few things, but I want to get this video out to you guys as soon as possible to at least kick off the spoiler season, talk about the things that are out and available, because there is a lot to talk about. And I'm really excited about this set. So let's Go ahead and dive right into it uh and the first one here is xanathar guild kingpin six mana legendary creature beholder uh five six at the beginning of your upkeep choose target opponent until end of turn that player can't cast spells you may look at the top card of their library anytime you may play the top card of the library so you can play lands there too you may spend mana as though it was any mana to cast this cast spells this way so you're gonna look at the top card of it's basically like almost like a villainous wealth on somebody, but you get to just be casting the things that are on top of their library over and over and over again. If they have extra lands, you can play stuff like that. Anyway, it's, it's a really cool. I, I think this is a really, really fun um, commander to play. <laughs> so I'm really excited to play that. I think it's also just really good uh, you know, playing and playing against any kind of opponent playing up against like a mono red deck high chance you're going to be hitting a bunch of just like burn spells and things like that you can hit uh and, and kill most of their team as well while you're at it uh five six is a pretty good body it's hard to hard to kill it's still six mana you probably won't be able to do anything else until the next turn but then on the upkeep you have tons of extra card advantage for it and so i'm a huge fan of this card i think it's good don't want to spend a ton of time on each card because it will be here for forever but love to hear you guys' thoughts in the comments below which cards you guys think are the best and which ones you're most excited for there are so many good cards at this one so next up icing death frost tyrant four mana uh four three flying and vigilance whenever it dies you create icing death frost tongue a legendary white equipment artifact token so you get a legendary equipment whenever this dies and then the equipment says equip creature gets plus two plus so oh, and uh whenever equip creature attacks tap another target uh target creature defending player controls and it's equip cost us two so it's actually really a really good effect i think it's it's quite sweet I like it. It's good. I kind of wish that Icing Death also had the ability to be able to tap down creatures, but that would be a lot of text on one card. So I, I can kind of see why they didn't do it, but pretty sweet card. I think that the fact that it creates an artif uh, equipment artifact as soon as it dies is actually really, really good value so that these four these four mana creatures in mono white decks or a lot of these kinds of decks in flyers, having it for be a four mana four three already is actually really good stats um as a flyer flying and vigilance makes that really really powerful we've already seen that with questing beast being able to be a blocker at four four is really really powerful four three may be a little bit difficult but still blocks a lot of really good things uh and then being able to give extra value afterwards fantastic card we'll see lots of play in standard i guarantee it uh maybe not tons and tons but it'll be it'll definitely be a playable card flame school three mana three one uh, flying and can't block whenever it dies exile if you do exile the top card of your library until end of turn you may play one of those cards um i i, I like it and i don't um <laughs> yeah so so it's oh so if you cast flame school this way you can't play the other cards so you can actually recast flame school so if it dies exile it until end of turn you may cast one of those cards so either the flame school or whatever so that, that actually is pretty cool the issue here is that a lot of times when it's going to die is going to be not on your turn like opponent might might have removal spell or something like that that to kill it um and then you won't be able to cast any either the spells unless you have instant speed stuff and so i feel like that's one of the biggest issues of flame school i'm actually not a huge fan of this card i think that it can be good i'm interested to see how good it could be um yeah we'll see next up we have teresk um nine mana ten ten and it has haste and ward of 10 if it was cast and then whenever it attacks it fights target creature defending player control so that's really really good uh so already having the ability to attack in and fight is really powerful giving it haste when you do it but only if you cast it and word word of 10 is just basically hex proof at that point like no one's going to be paying 10 mana or very very seldomly are people going to be playing 10 mana to to remove this for less uh and so i it's a pretty good card at the same time though it is nine nine and the benefit of it having haste and hexproof only comes if you cast it and so even just reanimating that becomes kind of meh 
Uh, and so I actually, I'm not sure I like it without the ability to have haste uh, when it attacks in um, and having the ward as well. So it, it's good, but I'm, I'm kind of intrigued by it. I don't, I'm not sure if I love it. All right, we get into the creature lands, and I love the, I actually, the more and more I see this art over here, it's growing on me. I, it's really fun art, um, <laughs> or just like the whole, the whole card and everything with this, I think is interesting, but it's, it's bizarre at the same time. Like, I'm not sure I want to see a card that looks like that in someone's mana base across from me, or even in my own mana base, you know, really, like, I'm just like, it would like, it would be a little bit cringe and at the same time i would love it and so i'm really in between on it i'd love to hear you guys' thoughts if you guys would play this version in your in your decks hive of the eye tyrant if you control two or more other lands uh it enters the battlefield tap so as long as it's your first one of the first two lands that you play then it is it comes in untapped and it can tap for black mana and then four mana until end of turn hive of the eye tyrant becomes a three three black beholder creature with menace and whenever this creature attacks exile the target card uh exile target card from defending players graveyard it's still a land i like these cards i think that um i, I i'm actually quite a, a big fan of, of how these ones play out the issue is if you control two or more lands um and there's a battle tap so just real quick talking about how that works out if this is a really really bad feel if you draw it as your like you you kept a two land hand you're playing a cheaper deck uh and then you draw that as your third land and you have to play it tapped on turn three that is very very feel bad um and so that that is the time that you don't want lands to be tapped the fact that this can be in 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 your opening hand you can play it untapped and everything is really nice but to minimize how often you're having that thing happen of having this be your turn three land that's tapped you probably only go down to two copies of these cards even though they would normally not have any issues with playing them at the same time though you want to have them in your opening hand because they're so good uh and that's the time that they are so good is when they're open in your opening hand that maybe you play more so i'm not sure how many of these you play i'm guessing it's probably two of just because you want to minimize the possibilities of that turn three feel bad play uh, and having them in the open hand would be great. So it's kind of interesting. So let's go through some of the other ones here. Hall of the Storm Giant. If you control two or more other lands, enters, uh, uh, otherwise enters battle tapped, you can pay six. So you need seven mana, six, and then attack with this. Until end of turn, it becomes a giant that's a seven, seven blue uh, giant creature with ward of three. It's still land. So a really big hitter. We've already seen Faceless Haven being really powerful after a board wipe. If you have seven mana, being able to attack in for, for seven after a board wipe or something like that, Good stuff. I mean, this is more for a control deck. It might just be a really good defender uh, that you need to have held up. But that's pretty good stuff. Uh, Hall of the Bugbear. This one was spoiled earlier or leaked earlier, and it is true. And so that's good. Uh, pay four until on a turn. It becomes a 3-2 red goblin creature token that says whenever this creature attacks, create a 1-1 red goblin creature token that's tapped and attacking and still land so pretty good stuff being able to make your board go wider uh hit in with with you know a good amount of power there is is really nice uh so still not quite on the same level as faceless haven but being able to create two creatures it's the same power same amount of power and toughness that faceless haven has but for one extra mana it doesn't have to be snow snow mana so I, i'm kind of i'm in between on, on whether i like that the fact that it still makes red mana though does probably put it to the same level as Faceless Haven on this one in my mind. So it's a good, it's a really good card for sure. Uh, and then keep the Frost Dragon, um, pay f five mana, create a Frost Dragon, uh, or it becomes Frost Dragon, uh, that's a three, four white dragon creature to, with flying until end of turn. So no, no extra text there. It's just with flying three, four white dragon is, is still really, really good. Again, though, that takes six mana and a mono white deck that is nice to have. Again, risking the chance that you might have to play a tap land on turn three so that if you do, if the game does go long, you might have a three, four with flying uh, is, is still really good um, in, a, in a white deck. I'm with that effect. You may only want to go one of with this deck with this card because it is really, really nice on those times that you have it and being able to have flying to be able to have the evasiveness to swing in with. Um, white cards tend to have some like extra equipment or the effects that you can do to maybe buff it as well. Uh, and so that can be a really, really powerful effect in a, in a white deck, but mono white typically wants a, a lot of early game plays. And so this works because it's if it's in the opening hand, it's great, but you do not want that turn three tap land uh, in, in those decks at all. 
um, minion, minion of the Mighty. Uh, this is a really cool card. So one mana, zero one with Menace with Pack Tactics. And this is something new that we're, we're going to see here a little bit is anytime there's just an effect, they're just giving Pack Tactics or like they're just using uh, D&D spells or, or D&D effects um, that um just are used as explainer for the rest of the text but they're not repeated necessarily that's just it's just you utilizing that for flavor which i think is really cool whenever many of the mighty attacks if you attack with creatures with total power six or greater this combat you may put a dragon creature card from your hand onto the battlefield tapped and attacking this is actually a really good one drop in a dragon deck a lot of times you're just wanting something to do on turn one having two or two to four of these in a deck is pretty nice and then if you're already playing dragons there are quite a few dragons in like the three to four drop slot now and especially uh with new dragon like the dragon board cards coming out uh with this set i think there actually will be quite a few really good dragons to be playing um early game that will get your power up to six and then you can swing in and have your big massive dragon uh to be able to play with this and so having it have menace means that it won't uh, take as much damage you could also play a combo deck where you play this out in turn one turn two you find a way to buff it up to six power and swing in with menace that's a lot of damage and if you get a dragon uh, coming in tapped and attacking maybe giving it double strike uh in fact in fact uh, terror of mount belis uh if there's a way to buff up this creature, like with mutagenic growth or whatever else, you could probably get uh, in a turn two combo win. I, I don't think you can do it in standard because there's not enough power uh, for that to work. But turn three, you could get probably lethal with this card. It's it's a really you have to have amazing cards in hand. But turn three, if with a buff spell and Terra Mount Velas, you could probably you could probably do a pretty good job of getting up to the six power and getting to lethal. So sweet card. All right. Um, Sphere of Annihilation. I, I hate how much exile removal there is in the format. I feel like so much of what magic, like all of the cards with indestructible or when it dies, this thing happens are just no longer useful because everything has exile nowadays. <laughs> and so it's, it's actually a little bit annoying to me, but this is a really good card. So Sphere of Annihilation, X in a black artifact. When it enters the battlefield, it enters the battlefield with X void counters on it. Then at the beginning of your upkeep, so you play it out on your turn on the next upkeep, you exile it and all creatures and playing walkers with mana value less than or equal to number of void counters on it and all creatures and planeswalker cards in in graveyards with mana value less than or equal to the number of void counters on it so it gets rid of crocs it gets rid of all that kind of stuff which i mean all that is rotating out uh with the new set the next set that's coming out um i think it's innistrad again we're diving into um come fall and so yeah there's always a rotation every fall um this card is really really powerful the main thing is that if you're already playing something like extinction event you're already playing a little bit of a control -y deck the time that you play this is on turn three when you put it out for two counters and the opponent is in this tough spot of if they have any other one to two drops they really can't play them on that turn they're gonna have to attack and try to get as much value as they can they still have a turn to attack in for lots of damage and if they think they can get to lethal with it maybe they'll go aggressive with it or maybe play out a three drop that can attack in uh but for the most part they're going to be in kind of a tough spot of okay that that limits a lot of the plays that they could have especially if they are more of an aggro deck or if you put this on three counters or anything like that like they put you puts them in a really tough spot uh to kind of just hold this over them and then I'll go off on the next turn, and that allows you to have an, a board wipe effect, especially for the, all the decks that do only have one to two drop creatures or lots of tokens or whatever. So then uh, you have the ability to then actually play out something for value on turn four instead of be playing the board wipe, which means it actually ramps up uh, the, the, the speed of a control deck in certain scenarios. And so I'm actually a huge fan of this card. I think it's insanely powerful. Although uh, it does leave uh, aggro decks with the ability to either destroy the artifact or to be able to kill you on that turn right after you play it. And so if they have the ability to do that, you, you kind of lose out on a turn of you know holding up a cast down or a removal, like some sort of target removal. But it's still a really, really powerful effect. So I, I'm in between. I, I, I don't like that there's so much exile effects that are coming out right now, but it is really cool, really powerful. All right, on to the next one. All right, next up, uh, Tre Trellisara Moondancer. Two mana, two, two. Whenever you gain life, put a counter onto it. So it's a, a Johnny's Pride Mate, which we've seen to be really, really powerful in green, white, having it be legendary, a little bit rough, but, and then you also get to scry one whenever you gain life. And so 
that's actually really really powerful so every in if the pride mate every time that you gain life which we've seen that get up to you know 20 20 power we, we've seen that that effect can happen a lot being able to scry one with it is really really powerful uh the the basic equivalence is like it's about three to four scries to equal one draw you get so much value out of the scrying to make sure you're drawing the right thing on the next turn that it's nearly the equivalent of a draw is basically how they say it draws are still typically better but at the same time making sure you're drawing the right thing can be really really powerful if you're able to scry 20 times in a game with uh trellisara that's really good <laughs> that means that you're basically guaranteeing that you're drawing the perfect card every single time and you know up against control matchups that's a really big deal that you're always top decking action so that the counter you know counter uh cards they, they're going to run out eventually or they're going to run out of board wipes and you always have another threat to be playing out there uh i mean trellisara adds a lot of value for that and that's something i think is really really cool all right uh next up same type of thing I was, I was showing the the kind of the flavor text here you come to a river two mana instant uh, either return target non-land permanent to its owner's hand or find a crossing target creature gets plus one plus oh until end of turn and can't be blocked i actually really like this card i feel like we haven't seen a lot of cards that have the ability like ugh, blue always has this effect of target creature can't be blocked this turn but it's never on a card that also works with just having good value because like those cards are like oh man that would be really nice in some situations it would be a really nice effect to have but for the most part you're going to want to be using return target non-land permanent to its owner's hand brazen borrower has been the main card for that so far but i actually think this could replace it in certain decks especially as brazen borrower gets uh rotated out come fall I think that this becomes actually a really powerful, a really good staple. Uh, and if there are, you know, you know, even if you're playing the Frost Giant card, you know, the seven seven that may not be able to get through, and you just spent seven mana to to get it out there, you might be able to have two more at some point and be able to give it, you know, unblockable or something like that. Like there's just there, I, not just in that. There's a lot of different times that you might be able to give unblockable. I think it would be really powerful. All right, I just checked and there's a bunch of new cards that just came out. So we'll dive into these ones really quick. Uh, Treasure chest. This one looks sweet. This is so cool. So three mana, you get an artifact that's a treasure chest. You can pay for to sacrifice or to sacrifice treasure chest and roll a D20. So if you roll a d20 if you roll a one you're trapped and you lose three life if you roll uh two through nine you get to create five treasure tokens so you get to pay four mana and get five mana out of it uh and then you can also if you get a 10 through 19 you gain three life and draw three cards so really good effect so four mana to be able to draw that many cards is pretty good and then if you get a 20 you get to search your library for a card if it's an artifact card and you put it onto the battlefield otherwise put that card into your hand and then shuffle so you get a tutor up if you get a 20 which is pretty sweet stuff especially in you know in commander i think in, in constructed play you're probably wanting to either hit the you know the five treasures or the gain through life and draw three cards uh, the hard part is that you're probably wanting to build around one of those things though and not and so it might be a little bit difficult to get exactly what you want but either getting five treasures or drawing three cards and getting through life both are really good effects and those are the most probable to happen and so i think it's actually really fun so this is a super cool card especially with the the um this next card which is really really cool I, I think i think the the flavor on that is really cool so also a mimic uh not a not a, a treasure or a uh a treasure chest but two mana you can sacrifice it to add one mana of any color so it is a treasure uh and then you can pay two and it becomes a shapeshifter artifact creature with base power toughness three three until end of turn and that's actually a pretty low amount to be able to get a creature that does that kind of stuff having it dodge board wipes having it dodge well not sphere not the sphere of annihilation because actually no it, it only gets creatures and planeswalkers right yeah so okay this does actually work well so i actually i'm, I'm a fan of this card i think it's a, a pretty decent like it, it, it's a good amount of base power and toughness for a creature to come out with uh and even after you pay two and, and, and turn it to a creature you could sacrifice it for mana if you need to as long as it's not tapped anyway so uh i think it's a pretty good card i i'm actually a big fan of this one all right on to the next one this is actually my first time reading this card <laughs> i just i just pulled it up here because i know it was time to talk about it so one mana the black staff of water deep legendary artifact you may choose not to untap the black staff of water deep during your untap step okay so animate walking statue two mana tap it another target non-token artifact control becomes a 4-4 artifact creature token for as long as it remains tapped activate only the sorcery all right so this is actually really good 
that's actually really really good so if you can have uh, a zero a zero mana artifact so it's, it's a non-token artifact that you control that so ornithopter still works with this so play this out on turn one um you know have an ornithopter if you can have any kind of other zero costed thing a mox amber whatever else to work with this uh you can pay to tap this and have a four four on turn two um so totally possible of doing to do that um a little bit difficult in i think in standard right now i don't think there's a ton of zero costed uh artifacts i think ornithopter isn't uh currently in the in the format I'm trying to think of any other zero costed artifacts that are but there's plenty in other places and so this actually is really good if you're just looking for a four four to build attack and it is legendary so you can't have multiple of these effects but there are, are other cards in, in, in other formats where you do it on turn two you play like an, an aura on turn two and so i actually really like this um and so if you can have it untap on your untap step and then target another another creature so this is a, a repeatable effect that you can have and so any kind of artifact deck that is looking to animate artifact creatures for this uh is actually really really powerful i'm actually a really big fan of this card first read on it and so i haven't thought about it a ton but i think it's actually really powerful um next up we have circle of dreams druid three mana two one it's a gaia's cradle so tap to add green mana for each creature that you control uh it dies though is the issue you know like so it's it, it does tap for one just by itself and so there's that this is a kill on site card three mana kill on site card which it comes right at the time that people have board wipes right at the time that people have a lot of stuff but it's kind of in the same realm of, as marwin i would say marwin has the ability to get tons of power and be able to tap for tons and tons of mana so does circle of dreams druid i i'm not sure if it's better than marwin but it also can be played in a lot of other decks that marwin can so it doesn't tap for as much as marwin could potentially be tapped for but circle of dreams druid really really powerful i think i, I think that you kind of think of it the same way that marwin uh was played though um it, it's not legendary though so you could have multiples of it uh it it's good i'm not sure i'm not sure how good it is it, but it is it is decent all right next card plundering barbarian this is a common card but i thought it was worth talking about because it actually has good effects so three mana two two whenever it's a dwarf barbarian which is actually good we need more dwarves we actually need a one mana dwarf though i'm really hoping that happens at some point but this is another really good dwarf for the dwarf deck three mana two two whenever it enters a battlefield you choose one either smash the chest destroy target artifact and be able to destroy uh sphere of annihilation like we were talking about is really important on turn three and so if you can destroy that on turn three or have this up for whenever they do play it if it's going to be playable um then this becomes really really useful and then the fact that it can still just come down and create a treasure token so yeah that's the other option you can pry it open just create a treasure token so if there's no artifact to destroy you still get a 2-2 you still get a treasure out of it and we've seen that being able to play something on turn three with a treasure token is actually really really useful and so this goes into a lot of combo decks the fact that it can have the ability to interact with it with opponent stuff is really nice but being able to just make treasure tokens to ramp up along the way actually really really powerful uh not like the best card in the world but a decent one for common and then also you see a guard approach so one mana choose one of these either distract the guard tap target creatures who can you can stop something from attacking in and killing you uh, or you can hide target creature you control gains hex proof until end of turn this is actually really really big so one mana just gives something hex proof we don't have a ton of these i i don't think we have any of those currently in the format and so having a one mana give something hex proof is a really big deal and the fact that it has another effect on it too is a very big deal so this is actually a very powerful card uh we, we've seen cards like this anything that's a one mana that gives hex proof see tons of play the fact that it has interaction that can actually be legitimate interaction tapping down the creature for your one big creature you're trying to protect any way to be able to attack in like it goes into a lot of the decks that are like it fits really well with a lot of the kinds of decks that want to play a one mana hex proof card and so i'm a huge huge fan of this card i think it's going to see tons of play depending on if there's the cards that actually make it work you know work out like it, it's a really good support card uh in in those decks so they need to actually have a good card for it but i'm a big fan of this card um yeah I, I think i think it's a really good card all right and i just checked and it looks like this brings us to the end of spoilers for now there will be tons more coming out later today um i'll be doing videos i'm not sure if i'm going to be doing two videos a day or just um one video a day just making them really long we'll see let me know what you guys want down in the comments below uh but this is really exciting i hope you guys enjoy it uh i am stoked for this set i think that it's a really fun set and so let me know what cards you are most excited for the things that you think are the most powerful uh and i'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks so much and bye-bye.